What's your name? George. George. Nice to meet you. You nice speak English? You. you lived in Ireland? Uh, well, life and work, Peter O'Brien. Peter O'Brien. Peter O'Brien. Level Ferre Gucci Lagerfeld. Peter O'Brien. It Island. Yeah. Now what you do? Money Kenki. Ah, your money. Money Kenki. Dreshki Parsalki Bikinki. Ah, your model, model. Bulgarian model. Mm-hmm. Old model. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Enjoy the beer, my friend. That was an interesting character. Former model. Modeled in Ireland, apparently. Jivka? Da. Как си Jivka? Da. Jivka е... Много професионал, да? Цяло живот работя. От 16 годишна до 80. 80 години си че сега? И работиш ли? Работя, няма пенсията ми 300 лева. Това е България. 300 лева? Да, точно. Сега я направя като 300 лева. Не може би. Така е. Защото тези, които не работяха никога, и те получават 300. 35 години стаж, 300 лева пенсия. За това работя. Тодор Живков знаеш? Как да не го знам? Априлския пленум съм получила. Добре или не добре? Живков. Ядяхме си, пиехме си, не се заключвах и нямаше решетки. И правихме нещо. Това, което го направихме, си го разделиха олигархите. За нас нищо не остана. Нищо. Продължават да налъжат. Това е. Не добре. Не вярвам на никой. Не добре. Сам на Господ. Да ми дава здраве. Живка? Да. Има работа. Тука. Да вече. Guys, I gotta try these pants on, but I'll be right back. Изнасахме домати, изнасахме консерви. Сега нямаме домати, нищо не произвеждаме. Нашите домати вече ги няма. Да правя как ги фалшиви. Фалшиви? Фалшиви ме. Хубав домат няма. Седем лева кило. Седем лева кило? Е, хубавият домат на пазара е седем лева. Истински. На кълхозни пазар? Домат хубав. Какъвто изнасахме на времето, какъвто и ние ядяхме. Няма го. Няма, а? Всичко го фалшифицираха, да тижи повече, пък да не е вкусно. Довиждане! So, what a lovely lady. And really sad to see that, as we've seen in other countries, that people that are supposed to be enjoying their old age, the time has come that they get taken care of. Well, the reality is that they can't make do with their pensions and they have to work full-time jobs. And believe me, it, it allows them to live, but it just barely compensates what they get. That's why I will always come to a city and find people like that and try and give them the business because they appreciate it, they need it more. And honestly, a seamstress has been doing it for 62 years, who's now 80 years old. Can you think of anyone else better to fix your clothes? I don't think so. I've got laundry I need to do. So I'm going to go and grab a coffee at a place that I usually have coffee because I haven't had coffee yet. So it's early morning. I need me a cup of coffee. There's a place here called Martini Bar, which I usually have my coffee in the morning. Okay. I'm going to try in Bulgarian. Okay. Iskam dolgo cafe s studeno mlako. Dobre. Adelno. 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 Dobre. Mola. Vale. Da. Dobre. Merci. Now a couple of interesting things about Bulgaria. 
one very specific one is that when people say no, the head movement is actually this. And when they say yes, the head movement is this. And it's very strange actually, and it can get very confusing. I've had many situations where I thought people were saying yes to me when they were actually saying no. And um, yeah, it can be very funny and, and sometimes can put you in a very uncomfortable situation. But let's see if we can get them to wiggle their heads for us and ask a completely off the wall question that would force them to say no, but just pay attention to the head movement. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is that, is that my milk? Yes. Is it, uh, is it cow's milk? Yes. Yes? Yes. It's, you don't have, uh, you don't have like um, dolphin milk? No. No? No. Didn't work. Slow today. Sleeping the machine. Yes. Good morning and welcome to this spectacular and extraordinary city of Varna. Now Varna is a city in Bulgaria on the Black Sea coast. It's the second largest city in Bulgaria in terms of population and I absolutely love this place. I come here often and one of the main reasons is because when you come to Varna, the one thing I can honestly say is it's like going back in time. I've been coming here for a good, what, 20 years or so and without exaggerating, almost nothing has changed. You see that rock there? I wouldn't be surprised if that was there 20 years ago. Look at these pavements. Walking around Varna is like an obstacle course, you know. Very little money has gone into infrastructure and bettering this place over the last 20 years. Now I know for the locals that can be an extremely frustrating thing. But for me, someone who's fascinated with history and the way things were when I was growing up between the East and the West, I can honestly say that coming to Varna gives you a genuine taste of what it used to be like during the Cold War. Maybe not in terms of what the cars are like and the advertising, but of all the places I visit today, this is one of the most genuine ones, if you like that hasn't changed much at all. And it's fascinating. One thing you always find in Eastern European countries are these places, these long strips that only sell flowers. And usually they work 24 hours a day. Now I want to show you what one of my favorite breakfasts is all about and that is the Bulgarian breakfast. And I know just the place. Let me get one of these. One of these. One of these rokče. Can you get me one of these cut in half? Thank you very much. There are some tables out here to have the breakfast, but I'm going to go across the street into the park, sit on a bench, and enjoy this. Now, this bag is quite heavy. I bought a lot of things. This would serve for maybe three or four people for breakfast, but I just wanted to show you a variety. And um, the whole thing costs 7 left 20, which is approximately 3 euros 60, which I don't know where you can get breakfast today for four people for 3 euros 60, but in Bulgaria, you still can. So the first thing I got is Ayran. Now, some of you might be familiar with this if you've ever been to Turkey. The Turkish culture has a huge influence here in Bulgaria, mainly because they were ruled by the Turks for about 500 years and eventually liberated by the Russians. But Ayran is a very popular drink here. And basically what it is, is a form of kefir or buttermilk. It's a bit watered down and salty. And it's really nice. This is what they call in Bulgaria, banitsa. Now they have a very similar thing in Turkey called burek and if you remember when we went all over the market in Riga looking for chiburek 
you can see where the root of the word is very similar uh, but these are amazing mm. crunchy warm and very greasy but delicious it's filled with Bulgarian cheese now what that is it's basically feta cheese the Greeks call it feta and honestly the Bulgarians have an identical version well identical I would say it's even better but very few people know about Bulgarian cheese because they just don't market it but it's practically feta cheese and it's amazing next on the list we have banitsa stuffed with Bulgarian cheese and spinach Oh, that is so good. This one is what they call rokche, which is a different kind of pastry. And on the inside, you can see, is a combination of cheeses. You've got the feta cheese and what they call kashkaval, which is kind of a yellow cheese. They call it yellow cheese closest I could think of is a kind of Gouda. Mm. They're all so great, so fresh, still warm. Finally, what we have here is another banitsa, but in a different form. It's like a huge triangle. So good. Absolutely amazing, guys. The Bulgarian breakfast is for me one of the best breakfasts. Now, I'm in an area called Chatalja, which is where we had our dolphin milk coffee this morning. Let's put on a sweater because it's getting a bit windy. But I want to go straight into the center of town, like the main hub, where the tourists are, where all the action is happening. But I want to go there off the beaten track. I want to go there walking on these side streets. Hello. Hi Alex. Hi Alex. How are you? Hello. Good buddy. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm making a movie. A movie? Yeah. A movie about what? About Varna. About How wonderful place. it is. How in 20 years it didn't change much at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. I was here in 2003. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from England. Where are you from? Um, from Malta. From Malta? Yes. That's so cool. No, he was just born there. Ah, <laughs> from, are you from Valletta? Varna. Varna, great place. Yes. Say bye bye. Bye bye, bye, -bye boy. Oh. Yeah, so I just found it fascinating. I was here in 2003 the first time. <laughs> and nothing's changed. Nothing. It's exactly the same. The, same, yeah. the streets, the broken roads. <laughs> The pavements, like one tile like this, one tile like that. If God forbid, if someone is on a wheelchair here, they are fucked. Mm -hmm. They course. cannot do nothing. Nothing. Nobody is thinking about these people. That's that's Nobody terrible. Nobody cares. But they put the bicycle lanes. I saw they put the bicycle lanes. <laughs> yeah. they, I was in I was in Riga. They make beautiful bicycle lanes. Really beautiful ones. Here they just <laughs> throw some asphalt, yellow paint. That's it. There you really? go. <laughs> you <Hi did>. there. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Pavlin. Pavlin. Nice to meet you, Pavlin, nice again. I'm you. Justin. Good to meet you guys. So I'm going to go and show them now Sevastopol Cathedral. Show them everything. Everything. It's a wonderful place. Show them. It's just stuck in time. Nothing changed. <laughs> See you later. So that confirms it. They agreed with me. It's stuck in time. But I want to show it to you in more depth. So, like I said, I'm going 
into the center of town, but I want to use the little streets, go off the beaten track, and uh, see what this place really looks like. The sad truth about these places is that a lot of people struggle to, to make ends meet. And I'm walking past a lady, I'm hoping you can see her, not to, uh, not to embarrass her or shame her in any way, but I see this a lot here, that people need to literally rummage through rubbish to find a meal for the night. I mean, that's, that's how crazy it is. I remember one time, really sad story. Uh, I was looking out the balcony of where I was staying and I saw a mother with two children. They weren't very old. They must have been about three, five years old, something along the, around that. And uh, she opened the rubbish, literally picked them up and put them in the rubbish. And they rummaged around feeding themselves, finding old, you know, half-eaten strawberries or little drizzles of coke left in the bottle and they'd open it up and that was like the jackpot. And it was heartbreaking. And as you just saw, this still happens a lot 20 years later. It's odd really that in this day and age, people still need to do this. Supplement their pensions at the age of 80 with full-time jobs or rummage through rubbish to be able to have a meal. Now something that is very apparent and I would say extraordinary about Varna is also the stray animals and the seagulls. And I don't just mean some cats that are jumping in and out rubbish bins. Yes, there are loads of those. But dogs everywhere, street dogs that have piercings, that means they've been caught, they've been given their shots and released again. And they're everywhere. You can get them in entrances of buildings, you know, uh, wherever, they just lay around the streets and the seagulls. The seagulls here are the most daring seagulls in the world. I've seen them fly in and steal food out of people's hands, eat entire chicken legs. They're massive. Yeah, just some facts about Varna for you. Extraordinary facts. So I want to share with you my experience, my views on Bulgaria and the Bulgarian people. It's a culture that's very rich. It's a very mixed culture. And I very much love it. From their music, that is very influenced. It's Balkan music, basically. It's very influenced by the Turkish style music known as Chalga, to the people themselves. Now, the Bulgarians can come across as being aggressive, intimidating, like we just saw with those two guys. I mean, if you saw them standing around, you might think to yourself, hey, but they're sweet as anything. They're really nice. They're approachable. They'll enjoy a good laugh, as you saw. Don't let looks deceive you. The other thing that I want to point out, because their the cuisine is very rich, but if I had to name two things that really summarize the Bulgarian cuisine, it would have to be their breakfast food, banitsa, and the second thing, shopska salad, which is a very simple, basic salad, but amazing. And I might make a video preparing one with you guys. The other thing, drink, as you know, is Ayran, but their alcoholic drink is something called rakia. Any self-respecting Bulgarian will enjoy homemade rakia. It's a bit like Samagon in Russia. Most country houses produce rakia. And from different things, but I had rakia made for me from Dobrich. I used to actually physically order it that was made from peaches. And it was amazing. There's a bit of information on Bulgaria for you that you might find useful if you ever visit here. Don't be intimidated. They're very nice. So we've reached Sevastopol, named after the port city in the Crimea. And this is really the center point of Varna. As you can see, a lot more people, a lot more vibrant. And funnily enough, right there, that building, used to be a McDonald's. The only McDonald's in the world that I know that ever went bust right in the center of town. And that's because the Bulgarian fast food is very much influenced by the Turkish food. They love their donut kebabs and rightfully so, they're absolutely amazing. But an interesting little fact that that McDonald's right there went bust. 
And then if you take a look at that walkway down there, the pedestrian walkway that goes down there, that leads to the sea garden and the beach. And the one down there, the pedestrian walkway that goes down there, leads to the cathedral. And they're very beautiful, pleasant strolls. So why don't we start with the sea garden and then the cathedral. Let's go.